Hi, I'm Joe Dalton and welcome to Breakthrough Brands, the show that tells how Ireland's entrepreneurial DNA is rebooting the country one successful startup at a time. In this series, we'll demystify the process of starting up your own enterprise and growing it into a successful business by sharing the inspirational, educational, real-life experience of ordinary Irish business people. We talk to entrepreneurs who have taken control of their own destiny by doing what they love. On today's show, we have Alice Hyman. Exceptional growth starts at the top. So for the last 20 years, Alice has been helping sales leaders, business owners and CEOs drive sales growth. She incorporates the newest research and best practices to help business owners and sales leaders bring about sustainable change that leads to growth. Alice demonstrates how sales performance is directly related to a leader's mindset. When sales leaders change the way they work with sales teams, the results are immediate and dramatic. Alice shows shows you exactly what your team needs to do and helps implement processes to fit your company culture and increase revenue. Welcome to Breakthrough Brands. Well, thank you for having me, Joseph. I'm delighted. Uh, I've been watching you on YouTube. I've been reading your blogs. I've been listening to uh, the message that you've been broadcasting out there on social media. And when I listened to it all, I said, you know, we need to have this lady on our show. You're, you're talking the talk and walking the walk. But before we get into that, how did you get into sales? <laughs> if you ask my parents, I think they'll tell you I was born selling. <laughs> and I think that's how some people are. But I really never thought about a career in sales at all. Um, in fact, when I was young, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And when, when I went to college, I actually studied education. And I have an undergraduate degree and a graduate degree in elementary education. Um, so I wasn't really thinking about selling. But if you think about teaching, it really is a lot of selling because you're trying to sell students on learning and you're trying to sell parents on helping them learn and yep. and all of the other people at your school and helping children learn. So um, I was lucky enough to have my first career of about 13 years in education. I was a reading specialist for most of that time. And so I did a lot of selling, but I didn't know that I was doing selling and I didn't call it that. But how um, I really got into the big world of selling because my parents owned uh, Miller Hyman, which is an internationally renowned sales training company. Yes, yes, I'd never twig tweaked it, but yes, yes, continue on. Yeah, so uh, that was really my, my foray into the big world of selling. I will tell you, though, when I was in high school and I had a, a job, I did sell bras. That's always an interesting t- thing people like to <laughs> But yes, I sold bras when I was in high school so I was selling then and um, while I was a teacher I had my own business because I I am truly an entrepreneur and I have started a lot of things but I did start a business when I found a need for teachers and parents so I was selling then but I suppose again I didn't really think about it the same way as I do now so over all the years that Miller Hyman was started and running of course my father would call me to do projects for him and so I would And I wasn't selling for him, but I was doing projects that had to do with sales. And of course, I learned their sales methodology. And then after many years of him um, and my stepmom asking me, please come work for us, I finally did. So in 1994, I got catapulted from the world of elementary education into the world of selling, uh, selling with the B2B complex sale. And just you know, got my start with, with Miller Hyman by jumping right in and wor- working on all of their sales curriculum, learning how to train their programs, working with some of the largest companies in the world, Coca-Cola, Hewlett Packard, AT&T, uh, Fidelity Investments, and many others. So was it, was it a case of uh, any teenager or someone kind of going, right, you're getting into the family business, and it was, no, I don't want to. I want to do my own thing. Or was it you're getting into the family business and you were. Yeah, pu- that's an interesting question. You know, I never really thought about getting into the family business at all. And I was a teacher, you know, and I had um, 
you know, two degrees in education. So I, I kept telling my dad, you know, I'm a teacher, you know, thanks for asking. I'm happy to help with projects, but I'm a teacher. Uh, but, you know, the interesting thing about sales is you're always a teacher and good salespeople are teaching and helping and and giving new ideas and innovating and and sharing. And I think that sales is done better when we look at it that way than try to convince someone to buy something what we really want to do in selling is help people solve their problems and and that's a lot what teaching is so it's very similar but i didn't know that when i jumped in and yes i was reluctant to jump into the business okay. with my dad and my stepmom and a few of my siblings um there's seven of us not everyone oh, has like myself there's uh, i'm one of seven as well so we have something in common tell there me this, you know. t- tell us this then okay how did you overcome getting involved in the business and not jumping on your parents' coattails? Do you understand what I'm trying to get at? You know where you go, I want to yeah, be an individual, yeah. I want to be my own person. How, how did you overcome that? Well, it was interesting. Uh, if you want to know the real story, yeah, when I first started yeah. working for them... Oh, give us the fake, I, give us the fake I, story. I, <laughs> yeah, the real story. I was just uh, recently married and, well, I had been married a few years and so instead of using my maiden name at the business which would be the same name as my parents right yeah i used my married name so no one would know that i was related to them Oh, that's um, great. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. I didn't want them to think, oh, you know, the owner's daughter, like, what could she possibly know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but soon after that, I realized, you know, that I could stand on my own two feet and it wasn't going to be like that. So I, you know, was proud to to have the family name, but I was a little worried when I first started. So I didn't use uh, the last name Hyman at first. Uh, That went away fairly quickly though, but I actually only worked for Miller Hyman for about three years because when I came to the company at that time, my parents were already thinking about their exit strategy. And that was one of the reasons they really wanted me to come on. They wanted my curriculum expertise from all those years of teaching to work on the materials and to make changes to some of the programs and really kind of bring them up to uh, a very current state. And so we did that, but then of course I got involved with the clients and when when a teacher prepares curriculum, they have to go teach it. So uh, I don't know if my dad was really thinking that when he hired me that I would go out and actually teach the programs and sell. I think he was just thinking I would do the curriculum and and all the content, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But um, when I said to him, listen, dad, I've, you know, reorganized this curriculum and I need to go out and teach it myself so I can feel it and I can make sure it's right. And I've been watching a few other people test it and I need to do it myself. And he said, oh my God, Alice, teaching salespeople is not like teaching kindergarten. Yeah, but you had the perfect education because sometimes it is like teaching kindergarten. Well, having 25 salespeople, and at that time it was mostly 25 men in the room at one time, uh, and trying to bring new ideas to them sometimes did seem a little bit like kindergarten, but it was a lot of fun and I was very good at it, as you can imagine. I really had been teaching adults for years because I taught graduate level courses for teachers, so teaching adults wasn't really new to me. It was just the um, content that was new. So I was very successful at that did a lot of training, trained thousands of salespeople. And then I also trained all the trainers at that time that we were releasing out into the world to um, to spread the Miller-Hyman methodology. So I had a good run with them, but I knew they were selling the company. Um, it was, of course, top secret at the time. And so I went out on my own and started my own company in 1997. It, it's, it's interesting, just jumping back to your, your parents, uh, um, like, the, the new strategic selling I think I read that about four or five months ago it was very <laughs> yeah. informative like that book has been a new edition comes out on that every year um, and that is I, I know that consultants here use that book as part of their bible but for yourself I was speaking to a guy this morning and he said, you know, in the recession, everyone suddenly came a consultant and everyone came a sales trainer and we were joking about it. How did you leverage yourself being the expert in a business that has it was very male dominated and thousands of people trying to get out there pitching it as well? 
Yeah, everybody hung up a shingle, right, to be a yeah. consultant. But, you know, I I never thought of it that way. I was in it for good, and I had started my business and knew what I wanted to do. And, you know, it's funny, at the time, even though I was – in a you know man's industry shall we say and you know there were very few women i never really thought about it <laughs> i just did it yeah um i i just had the confidence and knew my material so well that i never thought twice about it again kind of a little peek or secret back there the only part of it that was tough was and, and this was a long time ago in the in the 90s but it's coming out all over the news now uh, there's one woman and uh 25 guys and sure enough one or two of them is going to hit on you yeah, that's, that's <laughs> so you know after after the program in the bar in the evening oh come drink with us you know come eat with us whatever and uh, you know it, i did have to watch myself so for that part i was always very cautious uh, thank you so much. I'd have one drink, get back to my room, kind of, you know, get out of the way of that kind of thing. Yeah. But while I was uh, the expert in front of the room training them, I was very confident that I knew something that would make them more powerful sellers and that if, if they brought that into their life, it would change the way that they sold and they would be more successful. So never any question there. I just always had to be careful around that because – I was the only woman around with uh, a lot of sales guys and you know a lot of it was all in good fun but occasionally <laughs> you know I was like oh no thank you I gotta get out of here so um, they smell the fear as well if you're training them you know they can pick up that smell of fear so going back to you were very confident worked in your favor as well I think it did really and again I didn't really think too much about the woman being the expert I just thought about what I was doing to help because again coming from the place of being a teacher and especially having taught elementary school my goal was to get them this information and get them to be able to use it not just there for two days but to be able to use it for a lifetime so that they could be as successful as they wanted to be when was the breakthrough? When did you realize that you had something? Well, you know, it's interesting. So when I was working for my parents, I wasn't much thinking about making a lot of money or what, how good I was at that because I left teaching and I loved teaching and I loved being around children and I sort of felt like I had sold out you know, yeah. <laughs> to the man, you know, it's yeah. like, oh my gosh, now I'm in, you know, I, as a teacher, you sacrifice, you don't make much money, you work really hard, you work a lot of hours and you, a you know, it's not job. about the money, it's the kids. And then all of a sudden I'm in corporate America where everybody is all about the money. So it was a really odd feeling for a long time. When, but when I left uh, Miller Hyman and went out on my own in 1997, I thought, wow, whew, you know, now, I, now I've got to do this. I've got to make money and I, I've got to make this work. And I think that it didn't take long. Probably took me about six months to go, wow, I love what I'm doing. I love really working on my own and um, love being the expert. And I just felt like nothing could stop me. And the first... Um, three years that I was in business I grew 50% a year year over year that's amazing we're just going to take a short break this show was sponsored by Harris Myers your sales and marketing agency helping you develop a better sales and marketing pipeline that's that's uh, truly amazing I congratulate you to that there's a lot of people out there that would love to, would love to be grown 10% in the first year right right and you know then of course the economy changed and things did slow down a little bit you know we're back up to doing that again but in any business there's going to be those peaks and valleys but I was really proud of myself at a pretty young age being able to do that being out on my own well, the, the biggest switch though that happened when I left Miller Hyman was at first I was still contracting with them to sell and deliver their programs 
Um, but then they sold in 98 and I stuck around a short time through the transition, but then really wanted to, to get out of there. So I did, but what I switched was from selling and delivering to fortune 500 companies yeah. to helping these at the time they were called dot coms. Remember those days, we do indeed. <laughs> the dot coms who wanted to sell to big companies. So I, I, I focused in a different way. I went to front to work with small companies who wanted to sell to really big companies. They had a business to business complex sale. Most of them had left big companies to go start these dot coms and they knew how uh, to sell to some degree in, a, in an environment where they had a lot of support at a big company, but what they didn't know how to do is sell to a big company in an environment where they didn't have a lot of support. So I helped them build their infrastructure for selling and their processes so that they could sell to big companies. That, that's bringing up a question. Uh, SMEs, small, say, dot-com companies, the guys are very knowledgeable in building a product, but they're not good at selling and a lot of them have that fear factor of trying to sell and that's where a lot of them will fall down so would you as a consultant or as a coach go into those companies educate them on prospecting first and then go into the whole sales process as in technique or everything to help them develop their business and drive drive their business forward would that be something that you do well, I do that now. Back in the day with the dot coms, we were, you know, they were throwing money at them like crazy. And we were just trying to get the sales infrastructure set up and then start generating leads. And, you know, the, the guys that I was working with were mostly from big companies where they had been in sales, but the owners um, and the investors knew nothing about sales. So we had the hard work of trying to help them understand sales. Today and in the last 10 years that I have been in business, I work with a lot of people who either started a business, you know, as a startup, who knew a topic really well, but knew nothing about sales. They come from a family business where they've inherited a business or, you know, worked in, worked their way up to take over the business. And again, really had very little sales experience of any kind. Um, or someone who left corporate America and purchased a business, and they may not have come from sales either. So these these business leaders are all trying to grow their business and grow sales with no background in sales and no real understanding. And most of what they understand about sales is very old. Um, it's not contemporary information. And so they still think that salespeople um, need to use old methods and uh, you know, cold call, not that they shouldn't cold call, as my friend Trish Bertuzzi always says, it's not the calling that's dead, it's the cold that's dead. Yeah. Um, but we, we have to do things differently today. And so uh, the, when I work with these business owners, I have to help them understand what sales is really, that it is problem solving. You have a solution to someone's problem. You have to find the people who are most likely to need that solution, and you have to bring them insights and ideas and you have to help them see how it's going to work for them. And the way that we do that today is very different than the way that we did it years ago. Definitely. It's uh, like I was, again, like yourself, a natural born salesperson, started off very young selling. Uh, and then I was trained and I was brought under the wing of Lee Du Bois. I don't know if you remember Lee Du Bois. Uh, and it was a sales technique um, and that changed my whole career in selling that was in my early 20s like it, it my my income tripled because I was taught how to sell and as we go along and we you know we coach people and train them I find that some people out there the older the, the person out there that you're trying to train they don't know because they think they know it all but the younger person who's coming in now have an understanding and they want to learn and they want to, they understand now that selling is a technique there's a science to it instead of just going out there and talking rubbish and hoping someone buys from you so right. so in that in, in just saying that what is the sort of process that you and your company go through to help uh, a, a business owner make sales that's a great question um, and it's changed over time and really in the last few years my team and I when we go into a company 
the first thing we do is work with the leadership, especially the owner, to understand what their mindset is around sales. Brilliant. Yes. A lot of business owners who don't come from sales really view sales as sort of a necessary evil. Um, they don't want to do it themselves. They want someone else to do it. They blame the sales team. They say things, negative things about the sales team. Like, I never know what they're doing. They're not hitting their numbers, you know, all of these negative, negative, negative things. So their mindset around sales is very negative. And if we can't change that, we're not going to be successful in helping them to really get the rapid growth they want. So the business owners that we work with uh, have to want to change. They have to start to see that they're the one driving sales at their company. They're the leader and the way they feel about sales and the role that they take in sales is going to influence everything else. Now, these are small companies. They're under $100 million and mostly the companies we work with are under $50 million. So there is sometimes like a 10 million they're trying to get to 20 million they're at 30 million they want to get to 50 million they want rapid exponential growth and they are stuck and they usually have a lot of pressure on them for some reason one of the reasons might be that they took on took on debt or equity financing yeah. of some type and now they have investors breathing down their neck they may want to exit their business and you know maybe it's a family business that it's time to sell because the next generation isn't interested or they've just run run it long enough and they want to sell it and make their money and get out so when we're working with them they've come to us for a reason they need rapid exponential growth because of the pressures that are on them and they haven't been able to make it happen themselves so they are starting to see oh my gosh i can't do this i need some help but they still may have a negative mindset so sometimes we start an engagement and they tell us they want to change they tell us they want to have a positive mindset around sales but they just can't make that switch and then typically we'll end the engagement because we can't help them you know they're going to continue to yell at their sales force beat up their sales leaders and do things that impede sales at their company in fact most of them will have a sales prevention department that's actually run by the owner of the company the making it difficult for salespeople to do their job so so, so you were going in as really as far fighting in, in in that case to they're sort of you're the last resort for them sometimes i i don't think we're the last resort because these companies that we work with have all done very well to this point yeah. they've done really well and now they've gotten stuck so none of them are failing um, they may not be hitting the crazy exponential numbers that they set for themselves or that their investors set, but none of them are failing. So our job is to get the senior leaders of the company and especially the, the CEO and who is sometimes also the owner to understand what their role is in the sales process. And when they can do that and see that, then the next thing is to help them understand how to manage their managers. The managers on it. So you... the managers can get peak performance from the salespeople. But typically, before we can do that, so these companies are successful. They've been successful for many years in some cases, but now they've gotten to a point where they're not hitting the target. And so they realize they've got to do something different and they don't know what that is. That's usually when they come to us. And so we're going to help them figure out what they need to do. But we're going to look at this leadership team first. And then we're going to look at the sales team because without the leadership really being on board and without the owner or CEO understanding how to manage the sales managers so that the sales managers can get peak performance from their salespeople, we're not going to get anywhere. Yeah. But the thing is, typically they need some flow of sales really quickly as well to, to settle things down and get the investors happy or you know, all of the stakeholders. So we're going to work on their flow of uh, leads right away and try to get that going. So meanwhile, we can be working with the sales leaders and helping them to 
dr- do the things the they need to do yeah. so that they can increase sales. We're just going to we're just going to take a quick break there, and we'll be right back, folks. This show was sponsored by Harris Myers, your sales and marketing agency, helping you develop a better sales and marketing pipeline. Alice, thanks for coming back on. I have a question for you. We're get, we're coming to the last ten minutes of the show, and I have a question for you. Something that's everyone's talking about: inbound and outbound. You know, there's people out there believe that you don't need to do outbound anymore, that everything is inbound. And there's the other part of the uh, demographic of salespeople say, no, it's all outbound. Uh, I personally, myself, I used to think it was inbound. But now in the last period of time, I believe that it's more for, for, for smaller companies outbound. Which do you think is the driving force or both? Well, wouldn't it be nice if all of the leads we needed just came in? Oh, <laughs> that would be beautiful. Be I'm, I'm, right? I, have, I have a Christmas tree, believe it or not, beside me here in the studio, and I'm looking under it to see if there's any leads. <laughs> yes, may, maybe there are some. Maybe there's some elves that can deliver some leads to you. I don't know. But I will say for any company that I work with and for most of the companies that I see in corporate America, we are not able to generate enough inbound activity to get the sales results that we need. I think inbound is wonderful, and I wish that we could do enough inbound so that salespeople could just have sales conversations all day long with people who wanted to talk to them. The world would be a fabulous place if that could happen. But we all know that salespeople need to have more sales conversations than they're having today, and inbound is not providing those. So we have to have a combination of inbound and outbound. And now more than ever, sales and marketing must work together. It's not enough for sales and marketing to just be aligned. They actually have to collaborate. The line between sales and marketing has gotten very, very fuzzy. Now, marketing people aren't typically out calling on customers, but marketing people must be online helping build the brand and they must be doing things to generate leads in tandem with salespeople being online, building their own personal brand along with the company brand and generating leads. So we have to work at that in tandem. We have to be collaborating because business accounts on social media can't talk to people. They can just amplify the message. People talk to people. And that in sales has not changed. That's the way it's always been and always will be. Salespeople talk to buyer people. So the psychology people talk of it all. Did you know, we have all these new shiny objects, all these these machines and technology that have helped the salesperson and extended the sales process. But I think you're right. It's it's people buy off people. So, right. And so social media is the big thing now, but people are using it as a billboard. Marketing's using it as a billboard. Salespeople are using it to send spammy sales messages. It's all about pushing information. But you see, that's not a conversation. And people want to buy from people who want to have a conversation and help them learn and grow and and collaborate and innovate and bring value to the table. They don't want pushing. And that's why I always say ditch the pitch. If you think about pitching, right, that's what we're trying to do on social media. We're trying to pitch. We get in front of people we want to pitch. But think about where pitching came from. It came from baseball. I take a ball and hurl it at you 90 miles an hour. Yeah. And you're supposed to catch it. Well, you know, here I am as a buyer standing there. You're hurling something at me. I don't even know what it is. I don't understand it. And I can't catch it. So pitching doesn't work. Conversations work. And online or when I'm in front of you, it doesn't matter. It's real life and it's the same thing. People wanna have conversations. And when we have enough conversation to understand that my product or service can solve your problem, we've got a sale. Yeah, definitely. On that note, what's the best business advice you've ever received? The best business advice I've ever received is to continuously learn new things 
Yeah. And I think for salespeople today, they must be learners. But we're not going far enough. We help them learn our product and service and we help them learn about our company, but we're not helping them learn about our customers enough, about our customers' products and services, about our customers' industries, and further, we need to help them learn about our, their customers' customer because that's when they can really be helpful. They can really be valuable and they know what they're selling can really help a company reach its goals and make its customers happy. Then people want to buy from you. They're like, wow, you care about my customer and whether I'm making my customer happy? Yeah, that's, a that's very not good just point. selling me a it product is, or yeah. service. That's, that's, that's really adding value. That is, it's really, really adding value to that. Where can people find you? Where if someone was, is looking to do some business with yourself, give us your details. It's not too hard to find me if you spell my name right. <laughs> I'm all over the internet. So it's alicehyman.com, H-E-I-M-A-N, alicehyman.com. And the Alice is just like Alice in Wonderland, A-L-I-C-E. But I'm also on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and uh, Instagram. And I'm even on Snapchat, although I haven't quite figured that one out yet. No. But there's, if there's... you do connect with me, please let me know that you heard me on this podcast. The, also, is there an email address? To, is there a hello email address if people want to drop you a question or anything or as well? Yes. If you want to drop me a question, you send it to answers at alicehyman.com. And when's the book coming out? The book will be out first quarter, probably in February, late February, so I'm very excited. I haven't quite got the name of the book down yet. I, I wish I did, but it's really going to be a book for the audience that I described. Business owners and CEOs who are running um, a company that needs rapid exponential growth and they have gotten to a plateau point. Um, these people will have a business to business complex sale and they need some advice and consulting on how to break through and get to the next level. You should on LinkedIn suggest three or four titles and ask your audience to pick the one which resonates the most with them. That's a great idea. Yeah, I, I think then that's, that's engaging as well. Promise me one thing about this book, will you? Yes. Get that audio, audible book out as soon as you can. I listen to I, I listen to one or two audio books a week. Um, with, with, with you know, with four children and a, a busy lifestyle, uh, all my books now are are on Audible. So promise me you get it out on that. I will promise you. And I think that's one thing, a way to that salespeople and business owners and sales leaders can be learners is to listen to audiobooks. You can get at least one book a month in oh, while you're you know, doing other things doing, if you uh, listen yeah. to it. So I, I love that you're doing that. I'm doing one a week, one a week. Uh, Fantastic. Tell, tell me this. Um, what book then would you recommend for someone to read? I have so many great books that I love to recommend, but because we're talking about the business to business complex sale, and it's something that my audience struggles with, I'm going to suggest that they read Strategic Selling, which I did not write, but uh, my father and his partner, Bob Miller, did write. And it is still one of the best books I have ever read on the business to business complex sale and how to get yourself positioned properly. So I'm gonna highly recommend everyone read Strategic Selling. And I will have to agree because I put that book down probably about six or seven months ago and I have to say I use one or two of the techniques in my own sales process. So yes, I would recommend. Which song or what song would you like us to play out with today? Happy by Pharrell. Can you promise me one other thing, please, Alice? Sure. When the book comes out, will you come back in and we'll, uh, we'll talk about the book? Oh my goodness, I would love to do that. Excellent, excellent. I look forward to that. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say Sunshine, she's here You can take a break
This show was sponsored by Harris Myers, your sales and marketing agency, helping you develop a better sales and marketing pipeline.